Hello everybody, it's the Motorcycle Muse here. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how a 12 volt lead acid battery works. Now, I know that there is no shortage of videos out there explaining how a lead acid battery works. But unfortunately, most, if not all of them, only cover the basic details. In this video, I'm going to explain in complete detail how a lead acid battery works. And you're going to understand all its characteristics by the end. So, before we start talking about the processes that go on inside the battery, let's just take a quick look at the outside of the battery. First of all, the battery is contained in a plastic casing. So the whole way around, it's contained in this black plastic casing. So the black plastic casing is quite important. The plastic has two functions. It contains the, sul the sulfuric acid electrolyte, so the acid within inside the battery cannot react with the plastic casing, which is very important, because otherwise it would just burn, if it reacted with the plastic, it would just burn through the plastic and then start burning through your motorcycle. The second function of the plastic casing, or the second important characteristic of the plastic casing, is that it cannot conduct electricity or current or charge. So that is important because we do not want to have a conductor between the negative terminal of the battery and the positive terminal of the battery. Otherwise, it would discharge and our battery would go flat. So there are two important characteristics of the casing. Secondly, as I've already mentioned, there is two terminals on the, on the battery. This is the negative terminal of the battery. As you can see, it has a little negative symbol. And in this one here, the second terminal has a little positive symbol. Now on this particular battery, the terminals are made from a metal called lead. Now lead is actually a very good conductor of electricity and it also plays an important role inside the battery itself. The terminals are connected to two electrodes that sit inside the battery. And the two electrodes sit inside a watery solution of sulfuric acid. So it's composed of two thirds water and about one third sulfuric acid. That's an approximation. And that, that only applies in approximately in a, a fully charged battery. So we're going to take a look at a simplified diagram of a battery. And specifically, we're going to look at the chemical reactions that occur inside the battery. So on the right hand side, we have the lead electrode, which is represented by its chemical symbol, which is PB. And the lead electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. And on the left hand side, we have the lead dioxide electrode which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And the chemical symbol for lead dioxide is PbO2. So it consists essentially of one lead atom and two oxygen atoms. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the two electrodes are immersed in a watery solution of sulfuric acid. And the chemical symbol for water, as I'm sure you're all aware, is H2O. And the chemical symbol for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. When sulfuric acid is diluted in a solution of pure water, it allows some of the sulfuric acid molecules to split up into positively charged hydrogen atoms and negatively charged hydrogen sulfate ions. So the hydrogen sulfate ions are represented by the 
HSO4 minus and the hydrogen atoms or ions are represented by the H plus. So essentially the hydrogen ions are missing an electron and the hydrogen sulfate ions are carrying an extra electron. This ion creation is a key mechanism in how a battery works, as some of the negatively charged hydrogen sulfate ions will begin to react with the lead electrode on the right hand side. When the hydrogen sulfate ion reacts with the lead electrode, it forms lead sulfate along with another positively charged hydrogen ion and two free negatively charged electrons. So the lead sulfate is deposited on the surface of the lead electrode, as is the two free electrons. The hydrogen ion, on the other hand, is deposited in the liquid solution of aqueous sulfuric acid. This reaction continues at the negative electrode for a time, as hydrogen sulfate ions react with the lead. This leads to the buildup of negatively charged electrons on the surface of the electrode, which in turn creates an electric field. This electric field attracts the positively charged ions of hydrogen suspended in the aqueous solution of sulfuric acid. So we end up with a negatively charged lead electrode surrounded by a sheet of positively charged hydrogen ions in the electrolyte. The double layer of electrons and hydrogen ions form a barrier which prevents further reaction between the hydrogen sulfate ions and the lead electrode. This double layer is very important as without it the hydrogen sulfate would continue to react with the lead electrode very quickly and ruin the battery. The double layer of negatively charged electrons surrounded by the positively charged hydrogen ions also results in the negative terminal actually having a neutral charge. This is the reason that you don't get an electric shock when you touch the negative terminal of a battery. Let's turn our attention to the lead dioxide electrode which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. The lead dioxide also wants to react with the hydrogen sulfate ions present in the electrolyte solution. But for that reaction to proceed, it needs free electrons. But the only available free electrons in the battery are the ones residing on the surface of the lead electrode at the negative terminal of the battery. And these free electrons are not able to pass through either the electrolyte or the casing of the battery as neither of them are good conductors. But what we can do is connect a conductive circuit made from copper wire, for example, between the negative terminal of the battery and the positive terminal of the battery. In this diagram, you can see this circuit connected up between the two terminals with a switch, which allows me to open and close the circuit. So when I close the switch in the circuit, it allows the free electrons to flow through the circuit from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery, due to the fact that there is a potential difference or voltage between the battery terminals. We can also note that lead dioxide itself is a very good conductor. So free electrons become available at the surface of the electrode and now reactions can begin at the surface of the lead dioxide electrode. Lead dioxide molecules and the free electrons at the surface of the electrode react with the hydrogen sulfate ions and the hydrogen ions which are suspended in the electrolyte and this chemical reaction forms lead sulfate and water. The lead sulfate is deposited at the surface of the electrode and the water molecules are deposited back into the electrolyte. As free electrons are drained from the surface of the lead electrode 
at the negative terminal, the electric field collapses and this allows hydrogen sulfate ions to begin reacting with the lead electrode once more, which in turn results in more free electrons which flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery, where they allow further reaction of the lead dioxide with the hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen ions. We can note that some of the hydrogen ions reacting at the lead dioxide electrode will have originated from reactions at the lead electrode. This means that while negatively charged electrons are flowing through the connected copper wire circuit from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery, we also have positively charged hydrogen ions flowing through the electrolyte from the negative electrode to the positive electrode inside the battery. This cycle of chemical reactions at the electrodes will continue as long as we maintain the closed circuit of copper wire conductor between the two terminals, allowing the electrons to flow continuously from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery. As the chemical reactions continue inside the battery, more and more lead sulfate will build up on the two electrodes. Also, as a result of these continued chemical reactions, sulfuric acid will be depleted in the electrolyte and the amount of water in the battery will increase over time. We can cut off the flow of electrons between the two terminals of the battery by opening the switch in the external circuit and once the electrons stop flowing the chemical reactions at the two electrodes can no longer continue. In theory the remaining level of sulfuric acid in the electrolyte will stay constant. Also the amount of lead, lead dioxide and lead sulfate at the two electrodes will remain constant as long as the switch remains open. Now of course we all know that in the real world batteries have a tendency to self-discharge over long periods of time if they are left idle and to prevent the battery going flat we recharge the battery at some stage but I'll talk about both of those two mechanisms in separate videos. So that's it. That's a pretty detailed description of how a lead acid battery works and you will, you will now be fully armed in terms of understanding the battery in your own motorcycle or car. If you found this video informative then please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. See you later everyone.